So today I'm gonna to talk about susceptibility to the coronavirus and other viruses in general. Of course, right now in the news, they're freaking people out about this virus. All sorts of speculating headlines, putting people in fear and worry. And I just wanna give my disclaimer, nothing said in this video is meant to treat or cure this virus. This is purely based on my opinion and there is some research down below. I'm not gonna to try to sell you a vitamin or any cure at all. That being said, let's dive into this very interesting topic. Now, did you realize that when someone sneezes, about 20,000 little droplets containing viruses are projected through uh, the air, and that is the mode of transportation for a virus. A virus does not have wings, it doesn't have legs. It has to be propelled in the air, it has to be contacted, and put on your body surface and somehow invade the body. And certain viruses have uh, targets for certain tissues. Um, so if you can envision the virus like a tennis ball with these little spikes, and these spikes have affinity for different tissues depending on what virus it is. The coronavirus has affinity for the lungs, okay? So it's gonna go in the lungs and do its purpose. Now the Latin word for virus means poison. Now, viruses are everywhere. These biological entities are more abundant than any other entity on this planet. Just one liter of seawater contains over a hundred billion viruses. So it really has to do with, are you susceptible to the virus? Now, the purpose of a virus is to deliver its DNA or RNA into the host cell, your cell, to be copied so it can actually continue. Now, DNA and RNA are just genetic material. So viruses can't do anything without the host, without you. So they're not really alive, they're not really dead. They have the potential of acting like they're alive and creating a lot of damage. So if we take a look at your cell right here, okay, and the virus, and this is definitely not in the right proportion because viruses are very, very, very tiny. Uh, certain viruses are like 44 times smaller than bacteria, and they go through five stages. First one is they attach to your cell wall. Now realize that your immune system is looking for these guys, and they're trying to kill it. So if you're susceptible to a virus, it has a much easier job of attaching and penetrating this wall right here. Now, the interesting thing about viruses is some viruses uh, have this envelope around them that they take from your cell membrane, cover themselves, they actually steal it, and they hide so they go underneath the radar so your immune system cannot find them. So they attach, they penetrate, and then they go into the center part, which is the nucleus. You see, they don't have anything that can read this program. Let's envision you have this little CD, okay? This little round disc, and you're trying to listen to music. You're not gonna be able to listen to music without some type of CD player, right? You need something to read it. Well, the virus does not have a reader. It uses your reader. All it has is the CD or the DNA, and it's definitely not gonna be playing music. It just wants to replicate, okay, like a copy machine. So what it does is it penetrates, it hits the nucleus, it hijacks your copy machine, the duplicator. And when it does that, it starts to reproduce at a very fast rate. And this prevents your own body from using that machine. So your own body can now not replicate anymore. So that's not good. So now we have the replicating stage and then the assemble stage. So they're going to take different things, modify their structure, so then they can come out of the cell and hide from your own immune system. That's what they're gonna to try to do. So they're gonna be released, and when they get released, the cell usually dies. Now, some viruses actually go dormant, okay? So that's called latent. So they just pretty much hang out and do nothing, and they wait, and they wait, and they wait until you're older, until you're weakened, until you're nutritionally deficient, until you're stressed, and then they come out. And this is why so many people get virus outbreaks during stress states, because these viruses are dormant. Another interesting thing about certain viruses is they can activate glycolysis. This is the release of sugar. Interesting 
I'm going to come back to that in a little bit, but I do want to mention this one point um, in a study that I um, read, which I'm going to put a link down below. When you decrease glucose metabolism, it weakens the influenza virus in laboratory tests. Now, that's very interesting. All right, susceptibility, okay? There are several factors that make you susceptible or vulnerable to viruses in general. Age. Now, here's the thing. There's nothing you can do about getting older. So, you know, let's cross it out right now. Let's not talk about that because there's nothing you can do. Nutrients, nutrient deficiencies. There's a huge connection between nutritional deficiencies and the health of your immune system and the susceptibility for viruses, but there's not a lot of focus on this one area right here. And there's not a lot of research. There's some, I put it down below. We'll, we'll talk about this in a second. Genetics. Well, you can't do much about your genes. You can do a lot about the epigenetics, which involves your environment, stress, nutrition, what you eat, but you're given certain genes, okay? So we, we're not gonna talk about that. All right, number four, your, the health of your immune system. If your immune system is weak, you're more vulnerable, more susceptible to getting the virus and having it um, create more destruction. The microflora in your digestive system, also around your body, has a huge influence on your immune system. So when you take antibiotics or you sterilize the body, you greatly increase the chance of getting infections. So antibiotics, steroids, drugs, chemotherapy, all break down your immune system and make you weak so you can't fight these things off. Also, if you have a pre-existing chronic disease, that makes you susceptible to getting a virus. Number six, stress. I've already talked about this a little bit, but stress significantly increases risk of infections and viruses I put some data down below. Your adrenal glands are really the gland that regulates your stress. If we take a look at um, mice that had their adrenals extracted, all sorts of problems with the immune system, increasing risk of infections, viruses. If we also take a look at another condition called Addison's, that's a condition where your adrenals are basically shut down, they're not working, and you need to take adrenal hormones, um, you'll see a lack of killer T cells in this condition. Interesting. You need killer T cells to defend against viruses. Also, your risk of infections go way up. So the adrenals are definitely involved. But this is the area I really want to focus on because you can influence this right here and you can also influence these with this. So in other words, you can strengthen your immune system, this and this with this right here. Now there's two things that happen when you have certain nutritional deficiencies. Number one, it weakens your immune system. So it makes your immune system weaker. But nutritional deficiencies also make viruses become stronger. Now there's a really interesting study, I put it down below, that talks about viruses are more virulent in selenium and vitamin E deficient mice which is actually quite interesting because you would think if you starve off this virus with nutrients, it would become weaker. But no, it doesn't. It kicks in a certain gene that makes it stronger. Very similar to when we do fasting, our bodies actually become stronger, at least temporarily, because you, you can't fast for, for too long. So certain viruses can go from avirulent to virulent. And virulent means able to infect the host. So by taking away their nutrition, they become stronger, but it makes us weaker. That's not fair. Now let's go to the next section that I wanna just kind of touch on this one topic on age for a second. Now, if we take a look at the fatality rate of the coronavirus in this age group right here, 80s and older, you see a 14.8% death rate. And let's take a look at if you're 70 or older, it's 8%, okay? 60 comes way down to 3.6% death rate. If you're in your 50s, it's only 1.3%. 40s, 0.4, that's less than a half a percent chance of dying once you're infected. I mean, look at this, 30s, 20s, or let's say you're in your teens, 0.2% chance, okay? This is extremely low. 
This is really important to know because if you read the news, they make it sound like everyone's going to die. Okay, so that's not true. Let's take a look at a couple other things. Here's the virus compared to other viruses. There's 121,000 cases. If we take a look at the fatality percentage, it's 3.9%, okay, in 113 countries. If we compare that to Ebola, SARS, and MERS, look at this. Ebola is 40%, okay, fatality rate. SARS is 9.6%. MERS is 34.4%. So the coronavirus actually has the lowest fatality rate at least of these four right here. It's just interesting information because sometimes, again, the news distorts things and it makes it sound like everyone's going to die when that's not actually true. It really depends on the strength of the immune system and how strong you can resist it. All right, let's talk about the key nutrients involved in viruses in general. One, vitamin C. That's probably the most important vitamin of all vitamins for viruses. It's a very well-known antiviral nutrient. It decreases the time that you have a cold. It decreases the risk of certain lung infections. It can help decrease the susceptibility of getting an infection in general, and it also can increase the white blood cell. Now, China right now is doing a study on vitamin C in the actual city where the coronavirus originated from. They're giving people 24,000 milligrams of intravenous vitamin C for seven days. We'll have to see the results on that, but that's actually quite interesting. Viruses in general, when you're infected, deplete your vitamin C. That would make sense as a strategy because if you can decrease the vitamin C, you can decrease the white blood cell. Vitamin C has the tendency to upregulate normal T killer cells. Vitamin C is also necessary to make interferon. And interferon stops viruses by killing the infected cell. So the cell that's been infected with the virus and its closely associated neighbors. So it really will help wipe out viruses. Now, one of the best ways to get vitamin C is through food. And hands down, the food that has the most vitamin C is sauerkraut. Normally, a person needs between 70 and 90 milligrams of vitamin C per day. Certain types of sauerkraut can give you up to 700 milligrams per cup. So that's a really good source. It's also in bell peppers. It's in leafy green vegetables, and it's in a lot of other foods as well. Number two, vitamin E. Very, very important in building up your resistance to viruses. Selenium, another really important trace mineral. Zinc, involved in over 200 enzymes, but vital for your immune system. And then, of course, you have vitamin D. Viruses have this interesting strategy to downregulate the vitamin D receptor because apparently somehow it knows that vitamin D is one of the key modulators for the immune system. It helps control it. And this is probably one of the reasons why people get sick in the winter, in the flu, uh, more than during the summer because the sun will give you vitamin D. As far as getting selenium and zinc, you can get that from fish and seafood. Vitamin E comes from vegetables, nuts, and seeds. Anyway, this is a long video. Thanks for hanging in there. If you have not seen my video on how to strengthen your immune system, I put it up right here. Check it out.